Rightio, here is the problem we are going to try to correct today. It gets in the way with my filming, and since I've got my automatic garage door opener installed, it's also a security risk because you can reach in and pull that tag and you can open the door up. Plus, I've just installed my wall hanger for the blower, and that's also, you can pretty much reach over my door and pull it out. So I'm going to plug that gap. Bright light, bright light. So, I've got this awning up here which is actually going to protect it from 90% of the elements and that means that the plywood I'm not terribly worried about getting wet and therefore it should last for quite a while. And that's what we are dealing with in terms of a gap. It's about 3.5 metres by 30 odd centimetres. Got some paint to match the colour so the strata is happy that it matches the outside of the buildings and in fact there are already other garages which have done similar things so it should be okay. Not to mention I'm pretty sure the strata manager, me, will approve the works. Alright, let's get down to some finer cutting, building a frame and getting some paint onto this barricade. All right, I'm at North Shore Timber and I'm starting the new project off with some 19 mil ply. And I've got the Craig Rip cut out because I'm going to need to shrink this down so it can fit in the back of the car as usual. The biggest cut I can make on this safely is about 60 centimeters. So that's what I'm gonna take off, which should work quite nicely. Fortunately, I didn't bring the tripod so I can't film the cut, but this is the setup that I'm gonna do. Of course, I don't wanna cut through my supports and I'm actually gonna use them. I don't mind if I scratch them. You can see there I've got my blade depth set to a millimeter deeper than the cut that I need to do. It'll stay in focus. So let's uh, cut this board down to size. There we go, cut through, and we should be able to see because of the blade depth. Look at that, dead perfect. I barely even marked my supporting piece underneath, and we kept everything safe. Loving that Craig rip cut. So I've got some 3.6 meter long 70 by 45s, which I'm gonna use the square cut to hack in half, not only to be the right length, but so they'll fit in the back of the wagon. There we go, all loaded in the back of a Mazda 6 wagon, very easily. I reckon they just paid for themselves. That was super quick, took less than 10 minutes to break down those boards in the car park. All right, let's get home and start building stuff. So here's where the important measurements are. That is 27 centimeters, 270 mil high. The really important measurement, because I have the automatic garage door opener here, is this length, which comes out at 1.6 meters exactly. So my frame's gonna run here, and then there's gonna be a second box frame over on the other side, uh, and just two pieces. So the plywood can cover the mechanism, but the frame itself will be either side. I had not cut from when I repaired the stairs at my sister's place, which was a 35 millimeter piece of H3, and this is a 45. The 45s are the ones I just bought. They're gonna form the long cross supports like that. These are gonna form the vertical supports. So if you're doing cabinetry making, these will be called the styles, and these will be called the rails. The rails run horizontally like the train tracks, train rails, that's how you remember it. And I'm going to glue and screw those in using my Craig pocket hole jig like so. But I'm also, because these are so long, going to grab it out a little bit of the middle and put another structural support on that and then we'll just be sticking the plywood to the front of that frame so that's going to be very very solid as i said dyna bolts on three sides the two sides and the ceiling will hold the frames in place and it should be quite a sturdy structure so make sure they're both square up the far end because that's the end i took the measurement from Because I'm making two, I'll keep these in pairs so that'll make sure that they stay together and they'll be exactly the same length. Right, now the styles. These ones are going to be 27 centimetres. Cutting boards one by one with a circular saw inevitably leads to them being a mill or two out. It's very, very difficult to get repeatable cuts that way. So if you haven't seen me do this before, very quickly, get a nice flat board, but the two boards that you want to be exactly the same length together, probably just see they use about two mil difference. Grab a clamp, 
clamp them down, make sure they stay square, like so. Then get the cut again on the cross cut, line it up to take off that extra mil or two, and simply trim off about a blade's width. You won't lose much on there, and I said it's a rough frame, but it'll make sure that at least these two bits are the same. There we go, they'll be exactly the same length now. I've got a K4 Craig jig set up, but I'm actually using an unusual combination of widths. I've got a 35mm board and a 45mm board that I'm trying to butt together. The jig actually measures up to 38, although you can use it to go bigger according to the screw length. So I've got the biggest screws that come in the Craig starter kit, and I'm doing a test run to see what sort of setting I'm going to need. I've set it all up to the 38mm depth for both my bit and for the drill depth over here. And things look encouraging. So these are my styles, these are my rails, they're just off-cut bits. I have drilled my test pocket holes and I've got my 64mm screw. And we can see if I join those together like that, which is how they're going to go, that screw is the perfect length at the perfect depth. It's going to give me the strongest possible joint without blowing through the other end. So that looks pretty good. Let's get these done on the production pieces. So there's my 153 centimeter long rails and fortunately I have just the right amount of roof clearance to mount them in the jig like so. So we say about 20 centimeters, I need to avoid the light bulb. Line these up. Lock them in, suction on, and remember to put them all on the same side. As usual, the great jig, that is super fun and easy, very, very fast, good on my holes drill. So I think the way that I'm going to try and put these grooves in for the middle support is use my circular saw. I was going to use the router, but I thought, no, no, I've seen a technique using just a Craig square cut and a circular saw, and that's going to well, be something new for me. And with every project, half the reason I'm doing it is to learn something new, not just to get a job done. These should be 153 centimeters. Half of 153 is 76.5, which is where I want the center of the board to be. I'm going to do both boards at the same time to ensure that they are exactly the same. And I'm going to use the actual board, so I'm just eyeballing this, it doesn't need to be precise, to mark out my groove. Alright, so I clamped all this down to the table and clamped the two bits together. Now I'm going to set the depth of my saw to about halfway through the board, that's way too deep. Hook up the back and we'll make a series of cuts with the square cut. So I've got about halfway through the board here, and these are literally just going to break out. Might get a chisel. Oh no, shouldn't need much. All right, I'll finish doing that properly later. For the moment. Yep, as expected, not going to fit just yet. Now I'll go pass by pass, just the width of the blade, until I can make that fit snugly in. That is nice and snug, so I'll be able to glue that support piece in without any trouble. That works surprisingly well. Assembly time, and I am going to glue and screw these joints together just for a bit of extra strength. Finally got myself some tight bond, thanks to that American marketing. Uh, Carbotech, as usual, good place for my specialty woodworking supplies. Won't find this stuff at Bunnings, that's for sure. Look, I'll keep using the PVA until it's gone, but I think, well, there's a reason that all the YouTubers use tight bond. It must work pretty damn well. 
So it was no more expensive either. It's almost exactly the same cost as the Sellies from Bunnings, uh, delivered free from Carbotech on a decent order. That's how that's going to go any better. Bit of glue on there. 64 mil screws. As we said, we're using the interior screws. I do actually have the blue coat ones, but I'm going to save those for a project that's actually going to go outside. The main reason these are interior is because you're not supposed to get them wet. And as we said, this project really shouldn't see any water. Plus it's going to paint over it. It is very quickly dawning on me. I really need to cough up for a 90 degree angle Craig clamp to do this pocket hole stuff. I really like the technique. I'm gonna keep doing it. So the 40 bucks or whatever will be worth it. But for the moment, I'm gonna to have to rely on my face clamp. Make sure that's all square. I will point out I've taken the hammer function off the drill because otherwise it's going to blow through those screws. So if you are using an impact driver, turn the impact off. There is now a bit of a gap on that. I really need some clamping pressure in this direction. So I've used my Rockler pipe clamp along with one of these giant Irwin clamps to span the whole width and give me the clamping pressure I need. Okay, dogs. Thank you, Mr. Rockler. All right, so there's one frame done. And look, even though they are very thick boards, there is still a tiny bit of movement in there. So I'm glad that I put this center brace in. Totally overkill for the application I'm using it for, but hell, it'll be secure. Now then, let's do the other one. I can now cut these pieces to length and the frames will be done. Mark it, cut a little bit proud, make sure it fits, then we'll do the second one. No screws here. The glue in the surface area is going to be more than enough to hold this bit in. Frames are ready. Now let's get rid of these two little bits up top. That wasn't hard. I don't even know what purpose they served, but they're in the way. Sorry about the auto-focus going on a bit stuffed up last time. And now it's going to be really dark because of the brightness outside. But this is the only way I can really film the test fit. Let's check it out. I really hope these fit. Well, it's probably dark as hell and you can't see much, but that looks fantastic. I've got just a little bit of gap either side of my brace and there's about a centimetre or two clearance above, which when they're bolted to the roof, means I'm gonna have a centimetre or two clearance above the door to allow a smooth operation. All right, next step, figuring out how the hell I'm going to bolt those on there, because that's going to be tricky. For the top, I'm gonna to be using four of these Dyna bolts. They're 75 by 100s, and they will be roughly evenly spaced along like so. Now here's that boo-boo that I predicted when I was doing my dry fit. In order for these bolts to work correctly, they can only go through 30 millimeter of material at the greatest depth for the short ones, which means on these boards here, I need to get a 15 mil countersink using a Forstner bit. On the side, it's not so hard. I can get that down quite nicely. The problem is this, the drill's too big to fit in this way. Anyway, we'll do the easy ones first, only one needed on each board, and then I'll try and figure out how I'm gonna countersink the roof attachments. Birds, planes, and ambulances, and the leaf blower, bane of my YouTube life. Well, I wanted a solution, and I found one. It's called a chisel. Accompanied by a hammer. It isn't going to be pretty, fortunately this doesn't have to. But that doesn't matter because it works. There is my bolt sunk down to the correct level. And short of making it again or pulling it apart or doing something complicated, that only took a minute or two to knock out. I only have to do it seven more times. If you are a fan of precise chisel work, 
I highly suggest you look away now because this ain't going to be pretty. Going to cut a hex shape out, I think. Alright, so as long as the head of this fits through there and sinks, I'm happy. It doesn't need to look pretty. It's going to be painted over and no one's going to see it. Beautiful. Just deep enough.